Christina, why are you here to see Father Amort? Eh, il fatto che avevo cominciato a bere corso di liberazione, poi sono andata un giorno a una messa perché cercavo aiuto, già ero seguita da un sacerdote, poi lui è l'esorcista più forte che c'è, 30 anni di esperienza, quindi... Do you believe that you're possessed? No, però in tanti anni, tante situazioni che mi sono successe mi hanno portato a pensare quello, sicuramente. Il problema è che non essere capiti, non trovare la persona quando la si cerca, quindi rimandi, 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 fino a che poi ecco io sono arrivata a un punto di non ritorno, quindi non ho più scelto io personalmente di andare, ma è qualcun altro che l'ha scelto per me. Did you ever try to see doctors or, or psychiatrists? Psichiatri mai, perché a me non era un problema psichiatrico come ad altri, ma un problema di malattie. Quindi è più difficile diagnosticarlo perché l'essere si è nascosto dietro tante piccole malattie, tanti disturbi, eh, incidenti. O poi ogni dieci anni era come una maledizione che tornava, quindi cose molto forti, sempre legate a una data di Gesù. Proprio ogni dieci anni, come una cadenza. E poi sempre una vita di disastri, di malattie, cose che non andavano. Il problema di Cristina è di avere una possessione diabolica. Il diavolo è un puro spirito, quindi non è che sia un uomo presente dentro una persona, no. È la sua forza che è dentro la persona. E hanno una conoscenza, come è il demonio, tutte le lingue del mondo hanno una conoscenza grandissima che la persona non ha. How can you be sure that Christina is possessed? La certezza che ci sia la presenza del demonio c'è soltanto facendo l'esorcismo. Perché quando faccio l'esorcismo si provocano delle reazioni particolari che sono esclusive. Padre nostro, che sei nei cieli, sia santificato il tuo nome, venga il tuo regno, sia fatta la tua volontà, come in cielo così in terra. Father Amort begins every exorcism by thumbing his nose at the devil. In the room are Christina's family and other priests to assist Father Amort. Santa Maria, Madre di Dio, prega per noi peccatori, adesso è l'ora della nostra morte. Amen. Gloria al Padre, al Figlio e al Spirito Santo, come era nel principio, ora e sempre, nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. San Giuseppe, prega per noi, Padre Pio, prega per noi, Padre Candido, prega per noi, Beato Alberione, prega per noi. In nome di Gesù Cristo, dei domini nostri, intercedente, Immacolata Virgine, Regina, Enrici Maria, Beato Miguel Arcangelo, Beati Apostoli, Spesso e Paolo, Etani Bussandi, e sacra ministra di nostre autorità di convisi o di infestazione di diabolici fraudi per la bella della sicurezza del regno. Qui stanno a terra esisti, con sì a Cristo un domino, via sua terra. E non è tua, qui in Isa ti muore, tu sei, in Iosef venuta, in Agni Cisco, si nomi di Cosimo, dei inferni triunfa per cui recede. Recendo il nome del Padre, i Sacchini e Spiriti Santi, 
importante, já estava uma mula da Cristina, nós vamos vir para o Danzão, os animais, e eles vão sete. Xedê, digo. Xedê. 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 Dormi, está o ministro Cristi. Que lhe o serente usa, pode estar, que dá que os estudos um mil anos, que lhe os brancos um contra mim. Basta! Que dá que os estudos um mil anos, 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 que dá que os estudos Grazie. Dominus Imperativi l'arbon caro fatti, imperativi l'arbon sex maria virgen, imperativi esso nazarenus, qui te, con discipoli sei di comprendere, e lì sono anche prostrato, ma chi si rappresenta gli abomini, può presente con gli abomini se parte, ne porcoro un grego, incredi presume, ma... Recedere con me! Mai! Recedere con me! Mai! 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 No, mi dico! Recedere con me! Recedere con me! Ha giurato il mio nome, la moglie è come il suo plasmale. Tu non mi spieghi, va a dire. Tu non mi spieghi, contrasti non cacchi bravi. Fino a quanto tardi stessi, tanto magi stili supplici un credo. Fino a una roba, non so il terzo. Se dice che è dominato il vivo uomo, ma è morto l'oro. Si vede pure se è studicare vivo, se è un corpo e ci sei con un bambino. Domine di l'audio, la tua ne vede. Domine un suo visto, oremo. Deus Cheni, Deus Cheni, Deus Sangerorum, Deus Sangerorum, Deus Patriarcano, Deus Sangerorum, Deus Sangerorum, Deus Martin, Deus Professorum, Deus Vigil, Deus, chi potesse fare male, donare vita a molti morti, presi al nostro lavoro, qui di nuovo di se figli e di un figli dei altri, venisse un canto e tempo, storquere no? Veniste un cante tempo, quelle notte, rispondemi! No! Veniste un cante tempo, quelle notte! Chi se te per fare su sulla misurgia, qui in fine tempo di tu, di te simbi, di uscia, di te a me, maledicti, di nini e metallo, di parato se il diavolo è tanti di sei, ti vieni in nini e tanti di fui, l'ero me sei rompi in un poco rientro, Tieni gli angeli sui, tieni a stinguibile, regalato l'incendio. Vuoi parlato? Qui ho prescritto, smaledito, ho uscito, su auto l'incesto, su segreto un capo, qualche ora che si mamma disse, su eri di conto, no! Sotto di le sottilità di sinvento, a gergo nu, a gergo nu. Eh, si è argointi, 
Quanti diavoli ci sono con te? Ah. 80 capi! Eh. 80, 80 capi! Dieme solo me se tu stui! Quando è che? Mai! Quando è che? Mai! In nome di Gesù! Dicasmi! Domini stigla di timi! Die qua! E che? Il Signore Gesù! Ha fissato il giorno d'andartene. No! Non te l'ha fissato ancora? Non te l'ha fissato? No! Sarà lui a fissarlo perché tu non conti una cicca. Non ve lo conto. È mia mia! È mia mia! È mia mia! È mia mia! È di Cristo! È di Cristo! È di Cristo! È di Cristo. Signore, questa tua figliola, liberala da Satana e dagli altri demoni che la sorbentano. Siamo eserciti! Esercite! Esercite! Per intercessione della Vergine Maria. Per intercessione della Vergine Maria. Per intercessione della Vergine Maria. Che ti annulla Satana. Lo sai che lei ti annulla. E contro di lei non puoi fare niente, contro di lei non puoi fare niente, puoi, sera, puoi solo andarsi a nascondere. E in nome di Gesù, intercedente, immacolato Virgine dai Gentrici Maria. E in nome di Gesù, intercedente, immacolato Virgine dai Gentrici Maria. E in un, e in un. Intercedente, Immacolata Virgine di Maria, Eggino! Dio mi ha fatto una come il cosigno! E tu guida il ministro lì se ti indigno. Forse si no di Musoveria, né poi una creatura andai, le circostanze. E la mia! Ora il nome, un lomodo anche il sostegno. Il nome è fatto, è figlio, Spirito Santo, via. Uh, uh. Ha bisogno di bere un bicchiere d'acqua? Eh, magari sì. Un bicchiere d'acqua? No, no, c'è l'acqua da venire. Ci sono i bicchieri. Oh, ma come si sente? È ancora viva? Sì, sì, sì. L'hanno troppo straportata? No, no, no. Sente male? No. Sì. 
ringraziamo il Signore. Before everyone left, Cristina's family asked for her father to be blessed by Father Amor. It was a shocking moment. Christina was not cured. Once again, she fell into a trance state. When her mother sat for a blessing, it only got worse. The man in the foreground is Christina's boyfriend, Davide. It seemed to me that her reactions were even more violent than before. This is an actual exorcism. It's different from all the movies. This is not fiction. It was harrowing to witness. There are many people who suffer, like Christina, from what they believe is the same affliction. But where does this come from? Is this really the random invasion of an external evil force? And then suddenly, it was over. But for how long? Neil, what do you make of what you just see? Absolutely amazing. So it's, there is a, you know, major force at work within her somehow. I don't know the underlying origin of it, but there's an amazing force. It's interesting to see that she is not separated from the environment. She's not in a catatonic state. She's responding to the priest. It didn't appear to be hallucinations. She appeared to be engaged in the process, but resisting. Yeah, it really looks something authentic and, 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 and real. People who have very severe uh, pain, sin syndromes, total body pain, for some reason, it can be even cancer, it can be other. There is a treatment, for instance, that uh, intervenes in the cingulum, that they have still the pain, but they don't care about it. So they can tolerate it. It's the emotional aspect of pain. And this is probably what she's describing when she tells you she's total body pain. It may not be really physical pain that she feels, but she experiences as physical pain. I mean, she, always, she is all the time in these paroxysms of aggression. 
I don't understand, again, what, what you were saying exactly. It's not necessarily directed toward the priest, or is it? I'm not sure. But she, he is like a caged animal, in a sense. Is this some kind of brain disorder? It looks like the state that we, we call um, delirium, which is an agitated disconnection from normal behavior and from the environment. Uh, illogical, often very powerful and energetic, often requires restraint. But delirium, you may see the struggling, uh, you may see some shouting and yelling, but this powerful guttural voice, that does seem, that seems like it's coming from somewhere else. Mentre serena e normale, ella si dice che guarda, quando tu eri tormentata hai fatto questo, quest'altro. Boh, lei dice non ero io. Non ero io. Non se ne ricorda neppure. Quando ci sono questi assalti del demonio, vanno a periodi. Vanno a periodi. Anzi, alle volte, sono anche periodi brevi. Per esempio, ci può essere anche un periodo di una settimana, un mese, in cui uno non ha nessun assalto del demonio. In genere, ogni giorno c'è qualche momento in cui uno viene assalito, ma solo nei momenti in cui viene assalito non è padrone di se stesso perché è in trance. Del resto della giornata e della vita è normale, è normale, anche se ha sempre delle sofferenze, queste sì, sofferenze fisiche e soprattutto psichiche che l'accompagnano continuamente, mali di testa, eccetera. Disturbi fisici, questi ci sono anche sempre, perché l'uomo è fragile eh? e quindi vessato, tormentato da questi periodi in cui è salito dal demonio, anche quando non è salito dal demonio, il suo sistema nervoso ne risente. The day of the exorcism happened to be Father Amort's 91st birthday. He was happy, and so was I, because it looked like Cristina was cured. Grazie, signor, vi benedetta, va un benedetto, e adesso vi mando tutti a farvi benedire. Do you think she could have been better helped by brain surgery than this religious ritual? I would say unlikely. How many you know, surgeries have you performed, brain surgery? Well, more, more than 5,000 mm -hmm. over the years. Uh, brain tumors, traumatic brain injury, ruptured brain aneurysms, uh, infections in affecting the brain. And uh, I haven't seen this kind of this kind of uh, consequence from any of those disorders. Are you uh, prepared to say that there's such a thing as exorcism and demonic yeah. possession? Here's the point. Yeah. You have to believe it in order to go through it. If someone does not believe that they are possessed, they won't do this. Yeah, yeah, but... They will have an MRI. They will see a psychiatrist. They will... Possibly, I don't know, is it an operation? Yeah, but is you know, it... people are very much context dependent. I mean, you probably will not have this in somebody who has no religious background. Right. Meaning that the religion that they absorb, you know, the, the themes that they absorb, you know, they obviously change their, their brain. So, you know, you're asking me, do I believe in exorcism? I, I, I only look at it as a behavioral phenomenon. If I were, and a Catholic priest, okay, or a Jewish rabbi, I may have different ex explanations. Can I characterize it? Maybe. Can I know how to treat it? No. So something is happening to her, it's clear. But maybe she puts into it the religious context in which she grew up. Because they believe, obviously, they know what's wrong with her. She's possessed by the devil. Are you religious at all yourself? Oh, come on, are you going to ask me this type of question? Yes. I thought this was about this. No, 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 not about me. No, no, but what is your thought about God, for example? I do believe that there is a limit to human understanding, OK? 
okay? And there is really a limit. Behind this limit, you know, I'm willing to place an entity called God. Dr. Freed shared with me this three-dimensional color-coded image of the human brain. The red section controls movement. The green controls vision. The light blue and dark blue sections control language. That yellow section is a tumor in the left temporal lobe. This tumor can cause seizures that result in hallucinations and language problems. Is it possible that this could be the cause of what we call demonic possession? I've never seen anything like that before, but I've only practiced neurology for 35 years. You know, I believe that these are behaviors that are generated in her brain. How it's done and what it is, can't say. In patients who have seizures that emanate from the temporal lobe, one of their manifestations in between the seizures is they can become uh, hyper-religious. Uncertain what the cause and effect is here, but so, that's a, that is a uh, coincidental linkage between those two phenomena. You don't think that you could take this woman into the, the normal uh, procedures in neurology and cure this? affliction only if this proved to be some kind of a seizure which i don't think it really is do you have any belief in exorcism as a possible treatment you know i have an open mind about these things because i've seen plenty of things that have occurred during my career and my lifetime that were not explainable at the beginning and have rational basis now there are plenty of things that we don't understand that are real for example, radioactivity, right? We can't see it. We don't know what it is. Once it was revealed that this exists and the good and the harm that it could do, that was a whole other field of science. Are you open to the possibility that an exorcism could relieve this? Would well, that... let's make it analogous to a person who believes in psychiatry, works with a psychiatrist, takes the advice, suggestions, input, no medications, no, nothing else. It's just two individuals working on a problem that one of them has. If, if the patient is open and willing to participate, I think the benefit can be realized by that person. Through exorcism? Through that process of interaction. If we don't understand it, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Given our scientific and medical backgrounds, you know, do we countenance the possibility of there being something that's uh, spiritual or supernatural in nature that takes the form of disturbed behavior? When, when someone's sick, you're supposed to do something, the right thing to take care of yourself. So she's doing the right thing by her family and everyone else right. to try to oh, get well, herself you know, back. It's not hurting her, it could be helping her. It could so, help, yes. Yeah, so, would it be better for her to see a psychiatrist in Rome? Well, it, the question is what kind of psychotherapy or intervention does she need? And the, they have a certain idea that the way you deal with this is by getting rid of that ne completely negative side of her experience. Mm -hmm. Perhaps in the case of some people, getting rid of it completely in this ritualistic way is quite good. Well, what do you think this is? Unconscious fraud? No, no, no. no it's, it's no, called, it's, 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 it's a defined, I, so, okay, this is called a dissociative reaction or there's a uh, cultural so trans disorder. Right. Dissociative trans in disorder. In the DSM and trans and possession disorder in ICD. Right. So it's a recognized, in, so this, in, in, this is right. a recognized diagnosis right. worldwide. It has some cultural variation, but right. it's basically the same thing. She is doing something and everybody's participating in a ritual that they all agree is the right way Shared to look at the meaning. world. Part of what may work particularly well for some people in that setting is that everybody in the room, they actually believe this is the framework of reality. 
this is what it is, and, okay, and we must do this. It's like placebo response. I'm right. getting into the right. idea that right. if you believe something to be likely to work, it's more likely to work. I have a patient right now on my unit who is similar to this in some ways. She says she's possessed by the devil. She speaks in a bizarre voice. She hasn't attacked anyone, but uh, she comes from a religious background. It's Protestant rather than Catholic, but it might be more of the charismatic Pentecostal Protestantism. So it would be that she has a history of trauma. And I could say what we're doing for her on the unit is we're, we're, we're treating it with medications and we're giving her psychotherapy, creating a safe environment. Uh, we've seen her before. This runs its course and she gets better, and uh, we, we, don't, we don't take a position during the treatment on is this really Satan bothering you, or is this you just really being tormented by your illness? The person is expressing a pathology that is understood as possession. She understands it as possession. Her group understands possession. Our field of psychiatry can understand it as possession just on the virtue of what she is presenting, the phenomena, without having to take any kind of stance on whether there actually are demons, spirits, because this kind of possession is attributed to, you know, Arabic spirits, uh, Jewish uh, dead people, Christian dead people, forces, animals. All over the world, there are many different kinds of possessions. She just has a certain belief in the origin of the possession. It was a revelation to me that the psychiatric diagnosis of Christina's condition is recognized around the world as demonic possession. I've never met anyone that I would say, oh, that person needs to be exercised. I think that phenomenon exists. I think it's extremely rare, but I think it exists. And I'll say this, speaking as auxiliary bishop of this region, I mean, I get people writing to me concerned about a loved one, concerned about a son or a daughter, someone concerned about himself, that I've got these strange things going on. What should I do? So I get those letters in this very place. So I, I acknowledge the reality of it. Would you have any misgivings about recommending a person in extreme spiritual disease to an exorcist, or would you recommend they see a psychiatrist? No, I think in our case today, we would want to eliminate the physiological, the psychological. And in fact, what happens in the church, we have teams of people that will look in a particular case, and that team will involve usually a physician, usually a psychologist, psychiatrist, et cetera, and a priest. Um, but the natural has to be eliminated before we get to the supernatural. If I started Jesus. crawling up the walls here, <laughs> yeah. and, or moving around on the ground like a snake, yeah. uh, what, what would you do? I'd call the police. No, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. What if I tell you someone has within them, they are possessed by a demon, what goes through your mind? I think what goes through my mind is that there are more things in heaven and earth that are dreamed of in your philosophy. This is a strange world that we live in, and to a degree, we can know it and control it, and we can analyze it, but there's a dimension to this world that is strange and beyond our capacity to control. This person is possessed by a demon. Does that make sense in scientific terminology? Probably not. But having walked through the scientific all the way, do I come to a limit where I say, Maybe there's something beyond what I can manage here. And I should be open to that if it, if it manifests itself. Can you accept the idea of demonic possession, of a, uh, a demon, a devil, Satan, taking over the soul of another human being? Uh, that's not the devil taking over your soul. It's the devil, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, seizing your body, the way they take over the soul is by tempting you to, to sin. That's how they get you, because you're using your free will to do evil. What is the conclusion you, you came to, finally, when you completed your, your last book? How do you have the universe that we've got with so much evil in it? Uh, when you've got a good, uh, a good God, an omnipotent God, then how does this evil occur? Well, I believe that a... Um, a transhuman uh, power of evil exists. Do you believe that there is inherent evil in all of us, let's say? Evil's like a shadow, it's like a parasite. So there's never inherent evil. The devil is good. That's to say, in his being, in his intelligence, in his will, in his, um, in his, ontological integrity, the devil is good. 
But if a goodness has become warped, if a person does not believe, and yet they manifest these symptoms, can they be exorcised? Well, you know, I would say in, in the full sense of the term, you're doing a full exorcism, and someone really is possessed by a dark power, their own personality has been kind of uh, put on hold. It's sort of in suspense. And what's being addressed is, is the demon within them. Speaking to the devil, I mean, heck, I, people like Father Amorth maybe can do that. I would never dare to do it. I'm, I'm not there spiritually, you know. I think that's a very dangerous thing. I mean, sure it happens. You, what did you say? I wouldn't do it. I'd be you afraid to do what? Speak to the speak to the devil. I mean, if I as we an exorcism, I don't think I'm, I'd be any good at it. I wouldn't want to do it. And uh, why not? I think it's dangerous ground. You got to be really, it's, really holy. It's in the scriptures. I know, but Jesus Jesus doing it. exercised demons. Yeah, absolutely, but that's why the church is really careful to choose very holy people. And don't and you're not. Demons. Hey, I would. I don't think I'm ready for that. Uh, I'd be afraid. How how much higher can you be than than the bishop? <laughs> Wait a minute. I, no, I, I, no, I'm not joking. I'm yeah. I'm really impressed with you saying that. But you I mean that see. that's a, a higher level of spirituality? I think, yeah. You want to find someone who is really at a high level of spiritual attainment, and um, that's a that's a dicey business. I mean, getting in close quarters with the devil. That's why. I mean, why? We can, well, because it's the devil. You have the power of Jesus. I do indeed, but the, but uh, uh, the church wants someone who is really personally holy to wield that power most effectively. Do you think it would have been possible for the demon to enter you? Sure, it's possible. But I think much, much more likely... Is it of part the... of your belief system? Sure, and it's possible, yeah. Has it ever occurred to you that all of this work that you've done could expose you to possession. The year I was finishing that book, The Prince of Darkness, I had an uh, attack of serious depression. And it seemed to me that it's like all the evil forces, you know, it wasn't possession, it was just whatever, I don't know, what are the causes of depression? But it was really very depressing to work with the evil all the time, you know? So I had this very serious depression. And um, that's what I would say to people, don't concentrate on the devil. I, I did it and I, probably wouldn't do it again. Concentrate on the good, concentrate, concentrate on God, concentrate on the positive, and don't think that much about the evil side. No, what you said God. to me is one of the most interesting statements I've ever heard from a man of your position in standing, which is, well, I don't think I'm ready to deal with the devil. No, no I'd be afraid of it. I'd be afraid of it. I, mean, I need a lot more spiritual training and a lot more spiritual maturity. No, and I don't mean that in some flip way. I understand. I, mean, I don't think I'm a terrible person, but I, I don't think, uh, I think you need to be really at a high level of spiritual attainment to enter into the lists with the devil. Oh, no. Father Amort had taken sick and was in the hospital, but I made an appointment to meet with Christina in Rome to do a more in-depth interview with her. She called my line producer, Francesco, and rescheduled the meeting to a small town 200 miles southeast of Rome called Alatri. Alatri is an historic village perched on a hill overlooking distant mountains. The central part of the village is surrounded by massive Etruscan walls pieced together without mortar like a giant jigsaw puzzle. The narrow alleyways and cobblestone streets are lined with small houses, many of them adorned with oil paintings of the saints. This is a religious town in an old world way. We had to walk about a mile up to the top of a hill to the Acropolis where the meeting was to take place. Within it, is the cathedral, considered a sacred place. We were to meet Christina in the park in front of the 12th century basilica. We arrived on time, but Christina wasn't there, and so we waited. It was 120 degrees in the shade. Francesco called Christina on her cell phone. She answered quickly 
sounding angry. Where are you, she screamed. We're at the park, Francesco answered. Where are you? I'm where I told you I'd be, at Santa Maria Maggiore, the church in the town square. I didn't take my camera inside. So this is my memory of what happened on July 4th, 2016, when Francesco and I entered the church. It was freezing cold inside, and we were trapped in a living nightmare. Christina was screaming. She slid around the floor in a cheap plastic chair, pulling her boyfriend Davide with her. He tried to hold her around the waist and throat. Give us back your film, he shouted at me. No, I want it shown, she screamed in the voice of the demon. I was terrified. Davide stared at me. If you don't give it back to us, we'll kill you. We'll find your family and we'll kill you all. It was the first time anyone had threatened my life. Francesco and I left the church, left a lottery. For a half hour, neither of us said a word. The sweat and the fear were clinging to us all the way back to Rome. At the end of July, 2016, before he could perform Christina's 10th exorcism, Father Amort contracted pneumonia while he was in the hospital. Two months later, he died. Thousands of people came from all over Italy to his funeral. disse non vedo l'ora di tornare in cielo perché prenderò a bastonare il demonio quando è venuto a mancare non glielo so dire cosa ho trovato c'è tutta una serie di, di sensazioni e non dico sofferenza però è come quando ti viene a mancare una persona cara però non l'ho presa in maniera drastica, oddio, c'è cioè andato via questa persona che mi ha aiutato tanto, è come se fosse ancora presente per me, cioè non penso che non ci sia. Grazie, grazie. I hope to see you. Will you tell Father I hope to see him on the 30th? Spera, spera di, 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 di rincontrarla il 30 luglio. Allora, se Cristina è d'accordo. He was the most spiritual man I ever met. Like everyone who knew him, I'll never forget him. He enriched my life. But what about Cristina? As of this moment, Christina's suffering continues. I've reached out to her without success. Friends in Italy tell me she's continued to pursue exorcism with local priests, but Father Amort was in a class by himself. 
Like the doctors, I can't tell you exactly what's wrong with Christina. My own belief is that there is a far deeper dimension to the universe. We know there is evil. There is also good. And if there are demons, there must be angels.